One of the biggest questions homeowners ask themselves before putting their house on the market is what should I fix? What should I not fix? As not all repairs are created equal when it comes to selling your home. In this video, I've spoken to investors, top real estate agents, and contractors to find out the top six do's and don'ts when it comes to repairing your house. Make sure you stay to the end to see if the repair that you've been thinking about actually made the top six skip it or repair it list. And real quick, and before you start sinking a fortune into renovating and fixing your property, it's best to consult with an experienced local real estate agent. And I'm not just saying that because I am one. A local real estate agent will help you find out what the market conditions are, know what potential buyers are looking for, and also give you a breakdown of the comparable homes on the market and make recommendations on what to fix or what not to fix. The goal to making repairs pre-sale is to save you money in the long run. Okay, starting at number one of things not to repair before selling your house is don't repair all cosmetic problems. They understand that a home has been lived in for a while and there's going to be some wear and tear in the house. So if you have minor cracks in your walls or scratches on the floor or a couple of stains in the carpet, these are minor problems that don't need to be fixed or need to be repaired. Repairs that take little time and money. If cosmetic problems are easily resolved, it might be worth your investment. So consider covering it up with a neutral color. Fresh paint always makes a space feel clean and new and buyers who walk through the property won't see your paint color as a red flag and extra work that needs to be done after they move in. But remember, when it comes to cosmetic issues, it's all about balance. You don't want to spend too much time and money on repairs that won't make a difference, but you also don't want to ignore small issues that could turn off potential buyers. Don't do driveway cracks. Driveway cracks happen and sometimes within just a few months of a new driveway being laid. A cracked driveway may stand out to you, but most buyers will overlook it, especially if they like the rest of the house. Prospective buyers want a nice looking house. They don't expect perfection. What you do want to do is increase curb appeal so your house stands out. Instead of focusing on the crack, look at the exterior parts of your home. What can you do that will have a significant impact on your curb appeal? Often your money is better well spent on painting the exterior and adding new plants and shrubbery like seasonal flowers or just cleaning up the existing landscape. Make your house stand out and have a warm and inviting feel. According to a recent study, curb appeal can contribute to a home selling price by 1% to 7%. And in some markets, it's even gone up to 14%. So it's important to make sure that your house looks its best from the outside. If you would like me to make a video on how to increase your curb appeal, please drop a comment and write the word curb appeal down below. Remember, improving your curb appeal can help you sell your home faster and at a higher price. So take some time to make your house look its best from the outside. Now moving on to number three is don't do a major renovation. Unless you're a seasoned house flipper, who knows all the tricks to boost your home's value, going all out on a massive renovation might not be the best idea right now. And if you happen to be handy, you might ask, why can't I do it? While the cost of materials has gone through the roof, let's face it, most of us aren't professional renovators. So unless you're an expert who can make strategic upgrades without breaking the bank, you might discover that renovation costs more than you'll ever get back. I mean, the price tag on a full kitchen reno could start at forty to 50000 and up. And that's just the beginning. And in bathroom upgrades, you're looking at ten to 15000 in San Diego. And other big ticket items could be flooring or windows that could easily surpass what you're going to gain back from when you sell the house. So the smart move is do consider a partial remodel instead of going all out in a massive renovation. Think about those small, impactful changes that won't drain your wallet and that can give your space a fresh, modern look without going overboard in expenses. Think about swapping out hardware, faucets, shower heads for a fresh, modern look. Also consider upgrading kitchen countertops, 
bathroom countertops to modernize it. Invest in a new mirror or vanity in your bathroom to enhance its style. Or think about painting or reglazing tile on the floor or your bathtub for that matter. There are a bunch of products at Home Depot or you could think about actually getting it professionally cleaned too. And going on to our next item, our next item is flooring. It's one of those things that can vary from person to person and their personal taste. So number four on the list of what not to fix is carpet or flooring. Just like the bathroom and kitchen, your choice of flooring is often very personal and can greatly differ from buyer to buyer. Before you dive headfirst into a pricey replacement, consider looking for a professional cleaner to come in. You will be amazed on what they can do. You can really get out one, a bunch of those really tough stains. Before you rip out flooring, think about the next buyer who's gonna walk through the door. They might have an entirely different view of what they like in terms of flooring. Or if you put in hardwood, they might want something a little softer with carpet. Pro tip, there is an exception to the rule for this. When should you actually consider ripping out your flooring? If there are some really nasty stains on your carpet or your hardwood floor is visibly damaged and the flooring is actually going to scare potential buyers away. This might be a time to roll up your sleeves and get rid of it. But for the most part, think twice before spending big bucks on replacing your floor. Keep in mind that flooring is highly personal and you could save a pretty penny by just giving that old carpet a good steam clean. Number five is don't spend money on minor electrical issues. Now I get it if there's a flickering light switch or a slightly loose outlet that might bug you, but here's a scoop. They're usually not deal breakers for buyers. Most buyers understand that there's quirks in the house and imperfections, and they're not expecting that the house to be perfect. They most likely won't get hung up on minor electrical hiccups, even if they notice them at all. They're usually willing to let them slide. However, do focus on major electrical problems and instead turn your issue to big issues. If you've got a dangling light fixture or exposed wire or outdated wiring or a seriously outdated electrical panel, those are the ones to tackle head on. And these major electrical problems might rear its ugly head during the all important home inspection. And trust me, these issues can scare buyers away and cancel contracts. Electrical issues can be a major problem and also unpredictable. And so this can lead to some intense bargaining during the request for repairs stage. And it might end up costing you more during escrow than if you fixed it beforehand. So your focus should be on fixing significant electrical issues before putting your house on the market leave the minor stuff to the next homeowner to handle. And the last one on the list, number six, is don't replace old appliances. If you have appliances that have seen better days, you might be tempted to swap them out for the newer sleeper models. And I get it, those shiny new appliances can really catch your eye. But here's the thing, buyers are really savvy about new appliances. They can tell if they've just been replaced and you're not buying top of the line for them. And your plan is just to swap out the old ones with a new appliance. So you might want to reconsider and save those bucks for your next house. So here's a smart move. Make sure you replace old appliances that don't work because buyers do expect everything to work in the house. Or if you've been dealing with a leaky dishwasher that is on its last legs, then it might be time to replace it. Six items of what not to fix when selling your house. Again, let's schedule a time to talk about the repairs that you might do or might not do, and others that you can absolutely skip. Your bottom line is to focus your attention on repairs that can genuinely boost your bottom line and the value of your home. Those are the things that can make a big difference in the eyes of potential buyers. Preparing a home for sale can be a daunting endeavor, but remember with the right guidance, you can make some smart decisions and maximize the value of your property assets make modifications that will help sell your house quickly. And thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please check out this other video, seven mistakes that sellers make and what stops a house from selling.